Hi everyone, welcome back to another uh, model build and today I'm going to be working on Metal Earths. Uh, this is a premium series and this is going to be uh, the Space uh, Shuttle Launch Kit. And this one, you actually have a choice of different nameplates. So you can go with Atlantis, Discovery, or Endeavor. And I'm actually going to be using the Endeavor um, because I, I'm actually going to give this set to my sister and I asked her which one does she like and she says she wants Endeavor. And so you, it comes with three sheets that are all color. And then underneath it, you're going to see the instructional, uh, instructional manual. And it's about two full pages, so it's actually um, eight pages total. So just like all the other Metal Earths uh, builds, what I'm going to be doing is looking at the instructional manual. And it's going to show me that it's going to be part B1. And if you look at this sheet here, it's going to show you all the part numbers. And so B1 is located here, which I'm going to find on this sheet, which is B. And I'm going to find out that it's right here. So I'm actually going to be uh, taking out this part now so I can start building. So what you would want to do is um, with your snipper, you want to get as close as possible to this uh, side here or this, to this corner. And I'm actually going to change my camera. So if you look at it here, you're going to see that kind of triangular uh, shape here. So you want to get right close to it as possible and then snip. It doesn't actually require a lot of strength. So you just kind of get in there as snug as possible and then just snip. And then uh, we're just going to go around and undo all the tabs that are connecting the sheet, the piece from the sheet. And then it comes off easily like that. So I'm actually going to be using this plier here because um, I want to make this curved edge. And for this part, this is actually mostly straight, um, but actually I do want to first check this here. So I actually want to bend this first before I start bending this guy here. So I'm just going to press slowly to start shaping it a little bit. And then I'm going to kind of, I like using this tool here just to kind of um, even out the roundness a little bit. So it's a little bit more uh, even then I'm just going to bend this edge here and then I'm actually just going to use this slightly curve. I don't want to curve it too much yet. And once it's ready, I'm going to hold on to this edge here and bend it down. And I'm going to see now kind of what curve I need to follow. Now I'm going to put this tab that I just bent into the hole and then bend it and crimp it so that it stays in place. Then I'm going to pinch so that the edges are meeting and we have our first shape. Now these two are in. So they actually want us to just bend here and here and there's going to be a slight bend here. Uh, so I'm, what I'm going to do is actually bend these two areas first. So I'm just going to get a kind of thin rod and then trying to make a kind of tight corner as possible to bend. Um, that's a little bit too much. I don't want it to be that sharp of a bend. Um, actually ask you to choose the place. I'm actually going to be using the Endeavors here. So here are the two Endeavor nameplates here.
with this shape here, I need to actually make it into uh, kind of a tip of the, um, actually the rocket booster. Um, so what I like doing is actually using like, the, actually I'm gonna go with a smaller size and then just kind of just roll it in a little bit just to kind of slightly bl uh, bend the tip down like that. You don't need to bend it too much, um, but at least have a slight curve at the edge. And after we have that curve, I'm gonna use this um, kind of double uh, round tip plier and start shaping it into like a cone with a rounded edge. The hole where the tab is supposed to go through, I do like bending it slightly. So it gives it a little bit better angle to go in and actually won't bolt, bolt out as much. So it, it actually hides the tab a little better if that whole tab is also slightly bent in. But that is completely optional. So as you can see, as I close it, it actually makes it a very nice seal. So for this piece, although it looks complicated, all we're really just doing is just bending it down. It's not completely nine degrees, but it's very close to. You wanna get it until the two uh, edges kind of meet with no gap. Like that. And then just go around. We want to straighten out the tip so that they're parallel. And then we're going to add these two pieces together. And then on the bottom side of this, we are going to add this ring at the bottom of the rocket, but I do need to make this parallel. And here we go. This is the first rocket and we need to make three of these. And we have it, we have three of the rockets here. And then we're gonna be attaching it to this piece here in these three parts. So there are moments like this where um, the hole is actually blocked off by the paint. That's when you use a Zapto knife and just kind of just push it in and then you get the hole again. Have it we have our uh, rocket booster and I'm actually gonna be skipping the next step because because the next step after is that you attach this here and it doesn't matter if you do this first so I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this now and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this sharper mark um, this is actually a paint, oil-based paint, that's a Sharpie. And so, I'm actually going to be using this to cover up the tabs here so that it doesn't show up as much. Because the white tab right now, you can really see where the tab is, but at least if you color it black in, it's less noticeable now. As you can see, like this. If you look carefully here, there's going to be two perforated lines. Um, it's actually really hard to see because it's just too small. Um, so you need to actually bend it two ways. So you need to actually bend it in first and then bend it out. So this is going to be really hard. So it's really uh, useful if you have a thin plier. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try to bend it without bending this first uh, bend that I've already done, trying to create a secondary bend, and hopefully this, these become 90 degree angles of each other. 
If it's not exactly any degrees, it's not the end of the world, but I, I try to get this as close as possible. And then we bend this 90 degrees here. And hopefully if you bend it at all right, there should be almost no gap in, in between here. And while we still have access to this, I'm going to be coloring it with this guy again. This one, this round tip plier is actually perfect for this because it's almost the right shape if you can get the right uh, circumference. And if you just wrap it around, but I'm actually going to do the edges first because the edges are always harder to bend later. So if you bend the tips first, then I can just go around and wrap it around like that. It closes down. And you're going to see that because it's so thin, it actually starts bulging out here. So you can actually push up along this side to where the bulge is and then kind of get the edge here and kind of crimp it a little bit and it should even out the edge. Uh, I'm actually going to do it with a straight edge because it has a little bit more grip. And even though we're supposed to bend this down, I'm actually going to attach this first before I bend it down because it's kind of harder to access the tabs once we bend down all the sides. Now that we have this piece done, we're going to attach it here. And then to put uh, how to attach this to here is that you're going to put this tip here into this hole first and then you're going to kind of use it as like a hinge to close off. So let me see if I can change my camera angle to something that you can see a little better hopefully. Uh, I think that was all out of focus. Um, so I'll kind of show you. You're going to put this tab in first here, and then uh, you're going to use it as a hinge and then close off and then um, put this tab through here. And then we can close off both tabs. And then we have one of our side uh, boosters. So we're going to do another one of these here. But before I do that, I'm going to do this first. So this one here, a trick is if we have a ruler, like a metal ruler that's about this thick, it actually helps a lot because for this side here that you have to bend down, it's kind of hard to get a nice straight edge. So it's actually easier using the metal edge and you can just kind of press down like this and you have a perfect U-shaped angle here like that. I'm actually going to widen it just a little bit so that I can actually access this side here. Fin is complete. And then we're going to do this just like this one, but it's going to be mirrored. So we have all of our parts now. And we're going to be attaching it to here. And this looks good so far. Everything's clean. And we will continue on. So this one needs to be bent down here. And also an overarching arch this way. Just slightly just curl it. Um, even this is a little bit too much. We just want it to be a slight curl. Okay, and we need to make another one just like that. But we also need to make sure to put the nameplate in here. We have our two pieces now, and we're going to be attaching the wings to the sides here and here. The 
so we need to actually roll this up into a cylinder and so what I'm actually going to be doing is using these tapping tools but if you have like a long rod like a wooden rod around um, you can actually use that to wrap it around but I'm going to start with this size first and then probably go a little bit smaller because um, this is actually too big but I'm just going to start I'm actually going to push this away on the side and then start rolling it little by little I want to make sure that I'm rolling the edges here because a lot of times when you're ro when you're doing this the edges are the the ones that aren't uh, rolling and so it actually gets a little bit too straight and you're not going to get a nice cylinder once you close it off so you want to make sure that you're really like rolling it in so that the edges are uh, being t uh, bent inwards As you can see we have our cylinder and then I'm just going to bend these areas and then close off but I'm actually not going to close it off yet because I actually have to put these into here so I'm actually going to widen it again so that I have access to the middle and so now I actually have access to get in here so if you've ever worked on like the Hogwarts model you're going to see a lot of these thin strips where you have to bend into u-shape and here's the thing, these are really hard to do. And a lot of times they only have it where it's um, connected here, here, and here, and the rest is empty. So you can just kind of bend these areas. But even then, you're not gonna get a very nice, clean uh, bend. So this is my little tip. And so it's like a trick that I like using a lot. You can use a metal edge ruler that's kind of thick like this. And it's actually the right thickness for this piece here. So you kind of just line it up and then you uh, start pinching it where it's connected. So you're going to see the connection points where you can bend it. The rest you don't have to really worry too much about because these are not connected. It's just uh, three hinges pretty much that you need to connect or to bend around the connection. And now we have a perfect U-shape. So this helps speed this up a lot and it's actually more accurate and it's actually quicker. So we have our two pieces now like this. to put the strip on here before I close it off so this is gonna be a little bit harder to do um, and I should have put this on before I put the strip in so this is gonna be a little bit difficult to do properly um, so I'm just gonna try to see what I can do to, uh, to fit this piece in now and it is in place now um, but this is not the way to do it you should have put this in here or I should have put this in here first and then put this part over um, I need to get a good cone shape but before I start rolling the rest of it I'm actually going to be using this uh, round tip plier to make sure that the edges are a little bit bent first because this is always the hardest part to bend properly then I'm going to use uh, this piece is just kind of help guide the cone into its shape and as you can see if I didn't do that ahead of time um, this edge will not be bent it will be straight so it will not make a nice cone shape so this actually helps me kind of uh, shape it properly by actually bending the edges first Close off the tab. 
Uh, if you've already done this where you made the mistake of closing out the, the cone and now you have to fit it in here. Um, in this case, luckily it just goes straight on. So the, the trick that I do is actually bend the tab the tab hole out a little bit so it's actually perpendicular. And if I actually did this right with the right cone shape or with the right cylinder shape, I should be able to just kind of line up the hole. And then push it in on all three sides with the hole. And then I can just do that. With this piece here, since I don't have to worry about the tip, I can actually use this round, uh, double round uh, parallel plier. And then just make sure I'm kind of following the, visualizing the center of the cone. And just making sure that it's always parallel as I start shaping the cone a little bit. have our first rocket done and we need to make a second one of these. So now we are done with the two rockets. Um, so I said earlier, <clears throat> if you look at the manual, you're supposed to actually wrap it around and then close this portion off. But I don't know if you saw when I was doing it with the with the second one, I, I actually closed it off afterwards. And here's the problem with that is that you can't really close it off like this. So right now you can see it's slightly loose because I can't actually reach in there and close off the tab. So the only way to really do it properly is to have the tab stick out and so you're going to have the tab exposed, uh, which I do not like the look of. So I think uh, my preferred method is still just closing out the cone and then just kind of bending down the tab to an 90 degree angle and just fitting it through and then just pushing down the tabs to close it off. I think this looks a lot nicer than how you're supposed to do it, which is an exposed tab at the very top, which you're, you can't really hide. So I'm actually going to just for good measure kind of just press it in just a little bit too. Um, and just hope for the best. So for this middle piece here, um, this is a little bit challenging usually because it's so because it's so thin, um, it's kind of hard to bend it all down uh, without warping something. But luckily, it's kind of broken up into multiple pieces, so it should be a lot easier to bend. So I'm just going to start doing little by little and one piece at a time. and start bending it.
So you're going to do this the same way with the other ones. And it's actually easier if you bend the tab in a little bit first before um, you close this off. Because it's coming in at an angle, it's kind of hard to fit it in when it's perpendicular. So you would actually want to bend this tab just slightly. Not too much, just enough so that as this bends in, it's actually a lot easier to access. And before we close it off, I'm going to push off these two tabs out because it's going to be hard to access and I could use X-Acto knife, but it's actually easier if I just push it out now from while I have access to the backside. So push this out this way and push this out like that. This shape we're gonna have to create a cone shape but it's gonna be a little bit rounder um, the, the trick with this actually is to when you're starting to to bend it and curve it um, you want to use a rounded plier um, if you can and just gonna start slowly bending it in and then you're gonna notice a moment where the corners don't really meet well I'm actually doing it a kind of a tighter fit right now I'm not too worried about the perfect cone shape as long as this line here actually um, kind of lines up nicely. That's really all I'm kind of worried about right now. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm bending it in a manner that the li it lines up really nicely. You're gonna see that it's a really not the perfect shape, but that's kind of where I'm gonna use this tool here to just kind of find the right um, cone shape here and I might want to go a little bit more now the, the next few pieces what we need to do is actually kind of layer it on uh, one piece at a time onto the cone so it's actually going to be kind of a strips of partial cone that we're going to be um, adding on top of each other. And so we're going to start off actually in the middle section here. Um, it actually makes it easier to start from the middle. Um, and then we can kind of just work around to the edges. 
to get the shape we need. I'm actually going to use this tool to kind of even out the edges a little bit more because it's not kind of even right now and I'm seeing a couple gaps right here. So I'm actually just using it to kind of make sure that the edges are a little bit more cleaner and we can make a little bit more uh, conal shape. And this might be a little bit tricky to do so if you're not comfortable with this and you can just use your fingertips and start trying to make sure that you have a more of an even curvature. And here's the completed dome for the shuttle, uh, the rocket actually, that it gets attached to the shuttle. Uh, my only kind of complaint about this one is that I think it kind of printed slightly offset, so there's a slight yellow line at the edges here, but there's nothing I can do about that. Um, even if I try to close the gap as much as possible, you're still going to see that yellow line. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but it's this is the best I could do. So for this long strip, uh, typically for the very thin strip, I've been using a ruler to push it uh, kind of down like this to get a straight edge. But in this case, if you see the middle part is actually a little bit thicker. So one thing I started doing too was I went to a hobby shop. I actually went to Michael's and picked up a couple of these balsa wood uh, strips. And so I bought a few of them so that I can kind of just lay it out like this and see like what thickness I would need. And I believe with this one, I just need a single thickness. Yep, that's exactly the right thickness I need. So now using this, I can just kind of use this as a guide um, to be able to pinch down along the balsa wood edge to get a very nice uh, 90 degree shape like this. So what I'm going to do here is, um, actually I'm just going to actually bend this down first and you, you, you can see what I'm about to do. So I'm going to pinch this in just a little bit so that it's a bit narrower than the width of this so that I can actually just use my fingers and just kind of get that curvature here. And then for the very edge, I'm just going to use the plier and just kind of pinch it down a little bit. Now I've got my kind of very nice um, kind of quarter circle here at the edge. So once you fold this piece down, you're, this extra tab here on the side is actually meant to be wrapped around so that you, that you make sure that it's actually a tight fit and that it won't actually move around too much. And then you have this single piece here. So for this piece here, because um, we need to make it into a dome, 
kind of like the R2-D2 head, I'm actually going to use this dapping block to start shaping it. And the way I use it is I actually start using the bigger hole. And then actually, let me change the camera angle. So I'm going to start using this um, and start gently um, putting pressure on it to start bending it little by little, but not too much. Um, And as you can see, it's starting to get its shape a little bit. I'm actually going to use my hand a little bit too to start curving it little by little. But because of this, um, there's kind of a score mark, it's kind of keeping it flat. That's where this will come in handy. So once I kind of get the rough shape here, I'm going to go to the next size, which is here. kind of gives you a very nice shape right here. Now the tricky part is having these two parts go in here properly and aligned. So the best way to just do it is just to work with one beetle um, or one uh, booster at a time. 
um, you're not going to be able to kind of align all of them at the same time. So just be very careful and we're going to just start doing one by one. I think it came out really well. Um, I'm kind of not really happy with how it worked out here. Um, but other than that, because uh, there's a little bit of a gap, just because it's not actually a perfect spear. I kind of wish this was more of a half, uh, half cylinder, two half cylinders, but it's more like a three quarter cylinder and a, a quarter cylinder. Actually, maybe two thirds and one third. Um, and because of that reason, it's kind of hard to get a nice spear shape or cylindrical shape because I can't shape it all at once um, because I need to attach it here. And at that point, I can't really roll it like I would with other cylinder shapes because of the uh, the tabs that are sticking out here. Uh, but other than that, I, I think it came out really well. I'm actually really happy with the overall uh, quality. Um, um, so here's the final model. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, I hope it was informative in some manner. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to the three different cameras right now. Unfortunately, especially with these two cameras here, this one and this guy right here, um, it kind of loses focus a lot. So it has a hard time trying to, especially with the small parts. Um, it's a little bit better than the GoPro setup that I had, but um, I think there's still some kinks to work out. So please bear with me as I try to figure out a better configuration. Um, as I move forward with some of these videos, but I hope you enjoyed watching this video And if you do please hit that subscribe button and hit the like video if you like the uh, the like button if you actually enjoyed watching this video um, And I will see you guys next time. Thank you